Hi, and welcome to Gavin Lon Digital. I'm Gavin Lon. In parts four, five, and six of this course, we created the database schema using CodeFirst EF core data migrations. In this video, we'll build the admin menu. A key technology in creating our admin menu is Bootstrap. Bootstrap version four was automatically included in our web project because we created our project based on the ASP.NET Core MVC project template. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell to be notified of future content. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It will be greatly appreciated. So the admin menu will provide a navigation mechanism for administrators to use in order to navigate to a facility where the administrators can view existing data in the system, add data to the system, modify existing data in the system, and delete existing data from the system. In this video, we'll add the admin menu to the main menu bar in the header for our web pages. We can add the code in one place for this because the MVC project template generates a view called the layout view, which facilitates certain code being repeated across multiple web pages in our application. The admin menu HTML code will be encapsulated within what is known as a partial view. We'll then call this partial view from within a special type of view known as the layout view. In a later video, we'll use APIs provided by the identity system to show and hide the admin menu depending on the relevant user's security status. So basically, if the relevant user is a member of the admin role, when the user logs on to the application, the user will have access to the admin menu. Conversely, if the relevant user does not belong to the admin role, the user will not be able to access the admin menu. We'll create the admin role and admin account in a later tutorial. In this tutorial, we are only going to build the admin menu superficially and we'll add in the security logic in later tutorials. Let's open our MVC web project. So on my Windows platform, I have not yet installed Google Chrome. As I said in the second part of this course, I'll be using Google Chrome as my browser for testing the functionality of this application as it is being developed. So if you haven't yet installed Google Chrome, Google Chrome is a free browser that can be downloaded and installed from this location. So let's install Google Chrome. Great. Let's ensure that Google Chrome is our default browser within Visual Studio 2019, so that when we run our web application interactively through Visual Studio, Google Chrome is launched by default. We can ensure that Google Chrome is our default browser within Visual Studio by performing this action. So before we add the admin menu to the layout view, Let's run our application so we can see what our main menu currently looks like. Oh, and right out of the gates, we have an exception. Okay, so the exception message is invalid operation exception, no service for type Microsoft.aspnetcore.identity user manager has been registered. So this exception is being caused by code that was automatically included when we included the identity system for our web project. If you remember in part four of this course, we extended the identity user type to include additional fields for the members of the application. If we open up the application DB context class, 
you can see the fields that I am referring to. You can see that we created a class named application user that inherits from the identity user type. The identity user type has been provided by the identity system. We then extended the identity user type by adding the first name, last name, address one, address two, and postcode fields to a class named application user, which inherits from the identity user type. So we have extended the identity user type to include these fields. These are fields that are not provided by default by the identity system through the identity user type. So if you look at the startup class here, you can see that we are passing the application user type and not the identity user type when we are adding the identity service within the configure services method in the startup class. This code was generated for us when we first created our project, but by default, the identity user type was passed as a generic argument to the add default identity method here. So in a previous tutorial, we correctly changed the default code provided by identity, whereby the application user class is passed as a generic argument here instead of the identity user type. The cause of the exception that we have just experienced is that the identity user type is still being passed as an argument to the relevant identity related classes. And we need to change the code so that the application user type is passed as the generic arguments to the relevant identity classes. So let's open the underscore login partial view. This is where the offending code resides. This file represents what is known as a partial view. For more information on partial views, please see a link within a section marked additional information below in the description. Let's correct our code. So where we see the identity user type, we must replace this with the application user type. We must include a using directive at the top of this partial view to the tech tree MVC web application dot data namespace because the application user class is a member of this namespace. Great. Let's run the code. Great. So that has fixed the problem and you can see what the current state of our menu bar is at this point. The code for this menu bar has been automatically provided by the ASP.NET Core MVC project template within a special view named layout. So what is the significance of the layout view? The purpose of a layout view is necessary because a web application typically contains UI aspects that remains the same throughout the application, such as the header menu bar, the left navigation bar, the right bar, or the footer section. ASP.NET MVC introduced a layout view that contains these common UI aspects so that the relevant aspects do not need to be repeated for each view in our MVC application. The layout view in MVC is an implementation of the same concept that was implemented as the master page in ASP.NET web form applications. So let's build our admin menu. We are going to implement the code for our admin menu in what is known as a partial view. A partial view encapsulates a block of code that can contain both HTML and c -sharp code and can be included within other views. So a partial view can be called and integrated into other views. So partial views facilitate code reuse. Other views can call code within partial views. So let's add a new razor view to the shared folder like this. Let's name our partial view underscore admin menu partial. So 
So before we add code to this file, let's look at the code that has been provided for us in the layout view by default, because our project is based on the ASP.NET Core MVC project template. So we are going to create the code for our admin menu and then integrate the code into the layout view within the unordered list denoted by the code here. The unordered list denoted by the UL tag here contains the HTML and bootstrap code that will be rendered as our menu bar. Each menu item is denoted by code within the LI list item elements here. These list item elements are members of the unordered list, which is denoted by the UL element. So let's go to our new underscore admin menu partial file. Let's add the code for our admin menu. So firstly, let's include an LI element. Let's add relevant bootstrap classes to this element through the use of a class attribute like this. Let's add an anchor element within our LI element. Let's add relevant bootstrap classes to the A tag like this. Let's set the href attribute to the hash symbol because we don't want this link to navigate us anywhere when it is clicked. We want this A element to serve as a toggle button for our admin menu. We need to add a specific attribute to our A tag and this attribute is part of the implementation of functionality that creates the toggle effect for opening and closing our admin menu. So this attribute is named data-toggle and must be set to dropdown. This element will contain the heading for our admin menu and let's label it admin like this. Let's create a div element within the li element or list item element and add a bootstrap class named dropdown menu to our div tag. Like the data-toggle attribute, this dropdown-menu class is part of the toggle functionality that we want for our admin menu. So now let's add three anchor elements within our div element. Each anchor element denotes a menu item. And let's add a bootstrap class named dropdown-item to each of these anchor elements. For now, we don't want our links to go anywhere, so let's set our href attributes to the hash symbol. We'll create the appropriate navigation functionality for each of these anchor elements in a later tutorial. Great, we have developed the code for our admin menu. Before we integrate this code into the layout view, Let's run our code to remind ourselves of the current state of our menu bar. So to integrate the partial view code that we have just created into our menu bar, let's open the layout file and reference our admin menu partial view from within the code denoting the main menu bar, like this. See how we are calling the partial view within the UL element, which contains the main menu items. These are default items that were created for us because the ASP.NET Core MVC project template is the underlying template that we have used for this project. These elements are denoted by ally tags within the relevant unordered list, i.e. the relevant UL element. Okay, so let's run the code again. And here we have our admin menu integrated with the main menu bar for our application. Excellent. So it looks slightly misaligned at the moment. So let's remove the BTN class and add the nav-link bootstrap class instead. This is consistent with the other ally elements 
contained in the relevant UL element that represents our main menu bar. And that looks much better, great. Let's tweak our admin menu code just a little bit here. For better clarity, let's also add a divider between the category related menu items and the media type menu item. Great, and that's it. We have successfully created our admin menu. Just to highlight one of the core benefits of using Bootstrap for styling our HTML elements, Bootstrap takes care of a lot of the detail for the implementation of responsive web pages. So when I say responsive, I mean the layout of our web page will automatically and appropriately adjust to the size of the user's screen. So if we press F12 while our Chrome browser is active, our browser developer tools are loaded. We can use this facility to see how our web pages will look on smaller devices. So if we press this button here, look at how the web application looks on a mobile screen. It automatically looks great, and this is thanks to the Bootstrap technology. Excellent. I've included links below in the description so that you can do some further reading on some of the concepts discussed in this tutorial. For example, the shared folder, layout views, partial views, and the bootstrap technology. To access these links, please look at the section in the description marked additional information. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It will be greatly appreciated. Please consider subscribing for content like this and much more. And please ring the bell to be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. I really enjoy engaging with you in the comments section, so please feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments section. The latest code can be downloaded from GitHub. A link to the relevant repository has been included below in the description. Thank you and take care.